saying to one of my kids the other day, to one of my daughters, we were talking about school, we were talking about pressures and life. And we started to talk about what, what really matters. And that doesn't mean like what matters because you know, you, you're a good person and that's what matters. What really gets you through life? And if you're a good friend, you make good friends. If you're an honest person, you can go to sleep at night feeling that you've been yourself and you've been straight and you can live clean and be right with yourself, then that's, then that's right. Find a way to be useful to others and you'll be happy. And, and don't, and don't let other people define who you are. The most important thing is to figure out what is uniquely different about you, not how you're like other people. So try to sit with that and then, and then be strong with it and be brave with it and, and don't let them change you. If I could be a wild animal, I, well, I'd have to fly. So something that, that can fly. I don't know enough about, I've never asked myself this question. And I'd want to be with my family. So whatever that is, <laughs> what, what, what animals, what, what animals in flight stick together? That would be me. I think kindness is always important, but I think the thing that gets you through life is, is, is a, It's to be, I don't know, it's a hard one. I, maybe it's because I'm a, I'm a parent with so many children right now that I'm really thinking about this a lot. It's a really good question and it's, it's hard to narrow down because I think maybe the answer is you have to have so many different attributes to be able to be a well-rounded person. And, um, and so there's, you know, there's kindness, there's honesty, there's purpose. And having purpose, um, I don't know. I think I, I, may, I want I want my children to know themselves and be okay with who they are, whoever that is. That's what I'd like, and and to be good people. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I hope this film. You know, we have so many young activists around the world who are very very engaged and aware of. Uh, of the dangers to our natural resources and to, and to all the animals and um, but but it doesn't hurt to get even more young people caring and connecting and and this even younger generation I think at the heart of this film we also see a young girl who's an activist who speaks up and is a part of the a very central part of the solution to to fight back about uh, to fight back against what is what is wrong and what is hurting the animals and I see that around the world today. What is upsetting is there is so much awareness with, with platforms like this and, uh, and many others. We know more than ever about what the challenges are and what is wrong. And, and yet we are still in danger of losing these magnificent species, these, these families, these animal families that we share this earth with, we are destroying them. And, um, and so there is, there is very, very far to go. And, and if this film is a tiny part of just continuing the discussion, I'm, I'm very happy. And I hope little kids see it and they want Ivan out of the cage so bad. And they start to learn about other animals and they, and they learn about poaching and they know that it's horrible and they wanna go do something about it. So, so if just a few little kids get mad, then I'm happy. Oh, that's a nice question. The, um, I suppose the, when she knew she was dying and, and she wanted to make sure that, that she could pass on to Ivan that what she felt uh, he had in him, that she believed in and what he needed to do to help the others. And, um, and it's a thing, you know, it's a funny thing as an actor, you, I've, people I loved have died, you know, and, and, um, and I've worried about death myself. And so you, you have, we've all had them, right? We've all had those moments where we, 
we, we wonder what we what we would say or what, what matters most and they're very clarifying moments of um and it's good to reflect on so it was sad but it was really good to reflect on okay if i was at my last breaths and it was almost over what what matters you know <laughs> it's it's not easy and um and i think about all the moms around the world every morning and i feel like we're we're in this kind of thing together where we're all thinking about each other and we're all moms and dads but you know you're just you're all like okay i can do this um i have four different schools going on with six different kids lunch breaks are different mad starts school at 6 p.m i'm terrible with math um I question history. I'm really, really uh, challenged parent when it comes to a lot of this stuff. Um, fortunately, I have very capable, smart children. So they're, and they're, you know, they're, they're getting through. Um, but it's hard. It's hard. And I think it's okay for every parent to just, you know, not try to it's just, it's just not going to be easy. And, and it's, and I'm certainly not getting it perfect. I'm not even sure I'm getting it right. So my thoughts are with others. Good luck. <laughs> oh, oh, I was so, I, I thought, you know, that this technology is advancing so much and I felt that there was a jump in this one where you really felt a little more the soul. And I was a bit taken aback. I feel like there's something, maybe it was the way it was directed and maybe because the story is so heavy and feels, it feels like there's Stella and Ivan, not a gorilla and an elephant. And that's how we approached it. But something, something about the eyes, something about the expression, it was subtle. And I, I was surprised by how real they felt. Um, I remember the first time I saw my puppet though, which we all laughed because my puppet so, was this big massive green thing that was kind of moving around. <laughs> I like being an elephant. Whew. Well, I, I know a lot. So most of my work on conservation is in uh, you know in in Asia and Africa and and I'm I was less aware of the the efforts of sanctuaries um, like across the states for example so so that was something I started to learn a little bit more about or how zoos have changed and learning more about different um, different zoos that have have adapted and are and are even doing breeding programs and then returning the animals back to the wild or helping protect the species or doing, these are things that I, I wasn't aware of because I think as a child, you go through this, you know, someone my age, you, at first you, you love zoos because you love animals, then you hate zoos because you love animals. And now we're not sure what's good and bad and why. And there's a lot to learn. It's not, it isn't so black and white. And, and there's a lot of, of good work they're also doing. That's, ne that's necessary because of the realities. Well, one of the fun things was to bring my children and the kids will not understand this question, but the parents will. The mall that was built was more a mall when I was a teenager. So you had the arcade and you had like the weird uh, gift shop kind of places and the funky, it, you know, it was, it, was, it was that time. So I got to bring my kids to a mall and show them what a mall before phones and before, you know, was like, and it was really funny and it was really great. And I tried to explain that they would sit around, you know, sit around near the fountain or in the arcade doing this or that, or hanging out. Um, and it felt so dated and, and yet so simple. It was a simpler time in a way um, for, for teens, I think. Um, so that was fun, and then and then doing the voices with everybody, and and uh, and just playing with with uh, 
with Brooklyn and and Danny. You know, it's it was just fun. It's 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 such a fun job if you can imagine that you get to sit with these amazing actors and and just get silly and um, be an elephant <laughs> and he and listen to Danny be a dog and you know it's fun. It's a good job. Well, first of all, um, like everyone around the world, uh, we're all just so much respect to the teachers because it's so hard. Um, and uh, and that sounds like she's a wonderful teacher and she's very connected to the kids and sharing things like that in such an emotional way. Uh, I do, I did cry. I did cry, but um, I call my kids, I call them happy tears. I cry when I'm happy when, uh, when Ivan, like in the film, when he becomes free, I become emotional about that. Yeah. Oof. We have uh, Vladimir, who's a bearded dragon. We have uh, Bowie, who is sometimes Carlos, hard to explain, a bunny. We have new bunnies coming in because we just lost a bunny. We have Dusty, who's a Rottweiler, and Sophia, who's a pit mix. I think that's it. I'm sure I'm missing someone. Well, I think like most parents, I have in, we have in common the, 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 the focus of the protection of the child. And I don't think Stella thinks about much else except how to make sure that those she loves are safe and, and will be okay. And, and I have that in common with Stella. And I think a lot of parents do. Oh, oh, honey, I miss you so much. Call me. <laughs> I miss you. Yes, uh, you are my favorite person to wear elephant onesies with. And, um, and yeah, and great question. What draws uh, Ruby to Stella? I, I, maybe, maybe because she's, she's on her own and she, you know, she doesn't have a mom and Stella doesn't have a baby and they become a family really quick and, and Stella wants to protect her and, and, uh, and Stella loves Ruby and Ruby's wonderful and funny and curious, just like you. Oof, that's a tough one. I really, I, I love all animals. Um, I love a leopard maybe because I was somewhere and I heard, I heard the sound of a leopard and it gets in your bones and it's this, this sound. And I was, it was a sanctuary that I was in. It was a reserve that was protecting. And, um, and I heard the sound, and I'm like, what is that? What is that? My, and I looked in and it was about this big because <laughs> they have that sound when they're this big. And cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, but that power, very, very solitary, or it seems, I don't know much about them, except they're always hard to find and, and they're on their own. Um, but equally, I love a meerkat. I find them hilarious. Ah. Well, my little girl, Shiloh, uh, came up to me and said, I found this book, mom, and I love this book, and I love Ivan, and I want to tell you about it. And so I, um, and so I read it, and we talked about it, and, and, she, and it is, it's a great, great book, and we talked about why she loved it, and why it was important, and she has a sanctuary um, in Namibia, and cares a great deal about animals. Um, and, and so, and what a brilliant way to be in this story than through the voice of the gorilla himself. Such a, such a brilliant choice as a writer. Um, so I inquired about where, if it was being made, if anything was happening with it. And then I started to talk to Disney. And then we developed it for a few years, always with the discussion of, you know, sometimes you develop something and you, you think of all the things you're gonna turn it into. And this one, everything always came back to the book and to remember that Ivan was real. And, to, and, um, and I think they did a beautiful job. I have so many. 
I'd really like to do that thing where you just take months and go everywhere or years. I'd be the person that just packs a bag and just goes and never comes home. Obviously I would have to be with my children, but <laughs> I, there's, there's too many, there's too many. Yeah, I, I actually can't answer that because there's, I want to see everything and I want, I want to meet everyone. You know, I like, it's not just places. I like peoples and cultures and I'm aware that a lot are, are also, you know, at risk of, of losing their culture. So I'd like to, I'd like to visit a lot of peoples around the world before they're gone. What I like about Stella is that she's, uh, she's a character who is very maternal and she's very, um, like elephants, she loves her pack and her family. And, and she is an elephant who is at the end of her days. And she's like many people are at the end of their days. She's thinking about others and what she can leave behind to make sure they're okay. Um, well, I don't suppose it gives it away because you've seen it, but my favorite scene, my favorite moment is watching him touch the grass. I get emotional every time. I love that moment. Because of everything it means and everything he's been through and knowing there was a real Ivan and knowing what that moment must have been like. Hmm. Well, I, I hope and I think these young people today are very aware of individuals who have made a great difference um, and are watching those individuals. And, and I hope they do see that it's not, you know, sometimes young people today, they see, they see something online or they see some person that's become, uh, you know, a, a leader and a voice and they wonder if they could be that, if they could be strong enough to be that. And they, and they think it means you have to, you know, you have to lead a rebellion and be, and be the biggest voice to, to make a difference. And you absolutely do not. Everything starts in, in the smallest way at home. I watched my daughter with her animals and how she cares for them. She had a disabled bunny and she built a wheelchair and she bottle fed it all night long and, and cared for it. And, and that was her way of, of responding and focusing and learning. And so to your, to your pets at home, to, your, to the situations in your neighborhood, to the, the treatment of animals everywhere, treatment of animals who are um, you know, being harmed uh, locally to those being poached from the forests far, far away. Um, find what you're passionate about. If it's one animal or it's a country or it's a rainforest or it's an ocean, find what gets you upset and where you feel you have to change it. And that is that's the, the thing that is true to you and follow it and fight it, fight for it. And, and you'll be happy in your life. You'll have found that thing. It's a lot of favorite parts. So this is a hard one because I, I loved, I loved, uh, I love the book. I love meeting the author of the book. I loved learning about the real story and then working with the real people that work with gorillas. Um, the silly fun, I had with all of the actors when we got to play in this world together. Um, and, and I'm really happy to do something that I think for so many families right now who are feeling quite confined themselves in, in a different way, uh, to have something to, that's good for, you, for families and that you can talk to your kids about and has a lot of nice themes and a lot of love and friendship. So I'm happy right now that people are, are enjoying it together.